I've spent a lot more time recently with the original Xbox than I have in years past. There's a couple of reasons why. First and foremost, third-party controllers are much better now than what the original controllers were, at least to me. Not a fan of the Duke controller, not a fan of the S controller. That's for a different video. But one of the other things too, it is now easier than ever to get an HDMI output without needing to solder anything to your original Microsoft Xbox. Now, there are the HDMI mods, those are expensive, and those have to be soldered into place, and that's a daunting task for some people. For me, I just wanted to get as quickly and easily as possible to an HDMI output. Now, I do have a set of the component video cables from Monster Cable, where I used to go into my RetroTank 5X. I wanted to use that upscaling for something else because, again, I don't play my original Xbox all that much. I know there's the Chimera, the Shimera, however you pronounce it. I haven't tested that out. The first one I did try out, however, was from the Bahar Bros, and this is the Zedusa. And what this does is it plugs right into the back of your system, gives you both an HDMI output, but it also gives you composite video. Good value, and it does quite a bit. After that, I actually got asked, hey, can you check out the Electron Shepard Xbox to HDMI? So I tested this out, and this just plugs in the back. It omits component composite, but it gets you again to a straight HDMI. And then most recently, I did a review on the XBHD from Eon Gaming. This also gets you directly to an HDMI output. It actually has two HDMI outputs and also has a built-in LAN adapter. But there were some interesting things that came after this video came out. Um, a number of people asked why I didn't discuss the fact that this picture was dark. Well, it wasn't dark on my machine. People asked why, you know, why would I go with this over one of the other options? I don't know that I said that I would. So what I want to do in this video is we're going to compare the XBHD, we're going to compare the Xbox 2 HDMI, and we're going to compare the Zedusa just to kind of take a look at what each one does differently, some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses. And I think quite honestly, the best adapter may be the least expensive. Let's take a closer look. So starting off, let's take a look just at the packaging that each one of these comes in because each one has its own kind of design philosophy behind it. The Electron Shepard Xbox to HDMI, this is it. Simple, straightforward. It's a blister pack that quite honestly has a business card in it, thanks us for our support, and uh, that's it. The Xbox to HD from Eon Gaming, like this is a beautiful box. This is something that you can tell that they put a lot of time and a lot of money into. But quite honestly, above the aesthetics, it's a box. Finally, this is what uh, the Bahar Bros uses for the Zedusa. And they have like packing material. And I wanted to say they had some kind of like a candy or something in here too. So um, you can definitely see how like Electron Shepard and the Bahar Bros just went with something very, you know, basic and functional where Eon Gaming definitely went. This is something you would expect to see on the shelves of like a GameStop or something along those lines. So let's take a look at the three units themselves and let's take a look at them in the order in which that I purchased them. So this is the Zedusa. Now one thing that I have done is I did print off a Blue Shell 3D uh, stand for this because of the fact that out of the box, this just basically is supported by this metal connector coming off the original Xbox. And basically it's the weight of the adapter and the cables are supported by that and I did not like that this gives it a little bit better support shout out to Blue Shell 3D for producing something and putting the file out there so that people like me with 3D printers can print them out um, now on the Zedusa you do have composite video stereo audio you also have a toss link output for digital optical and then your HDMI output as well so this and we'll show you on the back of the system plugs right in gives you all those features straight out of it. Uh, this, I wanna say about 70 to $80. The next one here, this is the Xbox to HDMI from Electron Shepard. I like the fact that much like the Zedusa, they both have a metal connector here uh, for going into the Xbox itself. This is very simple and straightforward. It's just HDMI output and then the multi-input from the back of the Xbox. It's a plain label, I mean, nothing fancy or about it, uh, but it's one of those where it just works and it gets you from the system to an HDMI output. 
And then here we have the most recent addition. This is the Eon XBHD. It does have the Eon logo here, which does light up when you connect it to the back of the Xbox. Has your Toslink output here for audio, dual output for HDMI, uh, and then it does have three connection points to do LAN connections to other original Xboxes. Um, one thing I will say too is they did design very nice feet into the bottom of here so that the weight is supported by this and not by the connector itself. You do have a metal connector here, which is again, good to see. And then you do have your ethernet adapter there. Uh, from a design and functionality standpoint, these are all well designed, well put together. They all do things fairly well. Now I will say that uh, I do wish that the Zedusa out of the box and the Xbox to HDMI did provide a little bit better support for that connector. Uh, this does still kind of just hang out uh, of the bottom of the system, just like the Zedusa did. Whereas the Eon Gaming adapter goes ahead and has the feet on there to support it. But again, we have the 3D printed shell on here from Blue Shell 3D. Shout out, thank you, sir. All right, now let's take a look at how each of the devices kind of go in and are supporting. I apologize if you hear the puppies wrestling upstairs. So first of all, the Zedusa now with the 3D printed stand just goes in. You won't hear a snap or anything. And then it's supported by the base underneath here. You've got your good connection to the back with the HDMI output on it. And then you do have good access here to your analog audio, stereo audio, along with your component video output on here too. And the Toslink connector overall, you know, just a nice, clean, simple fit. With the Xbox to HDMI, it just plugs right in here. Good fit, but again, there's nothing here to support the adapter, so that metal connector is doing all the support. I do wish it had some kind of a, a mold or something underneath, and I may look to see if there's a way I can incorporate this under there to support, to support that connector. Um, but this is very simple and straightforward. The other minor thing too is maybe having the HDMI port come off of one of the sides would have been nice too. Um, but again, the Zedusa comes right off the back. And finally, we do have the Eon XB2 HD. And the one thing that I found out in my original review is much like the GCHD, and one of the things I found is it's very similar to the GCHD. You have to push that sucker in a lot to get a good connection, because if it's not all the way in, you won't get a video signal out of it. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna test one or two games uh, on each of these and see how they look through each of these different options. All right, and finally, as we get ready to do our recording here, a couple things I do want to address real quick too, where these three items kind of fall compared to some of the others that are out there and the settings of what I am playing on. First and foremost, there are other adapters out there, such as the pound and the level height cables, along with uh, those AV to HDMI adapters. First of all, those HDMI, uh, those AV to HDMI adapters, those are crap. You can get those for like 10 or 15 bucks, they are terrible. They introduce so much lag and latency, and they screw up your color palette. RF noise, just those are garbage. Stay away from them. Um, the level hike and the pound cables, uh, and actually I think Hyperkin has a cable for the original Xbox too. Um, I would say out of the three of them, the level hike is probably the best, but each of them has their own sort of issues is the best way that I can describe it. Um, each are off a little bit on the color palette. Uh, I think the level hike tends to have the reds a bit more oversaturated versus the other, the pound and the hyperkin seem to be almost identical, quite honestly. Um, they are essentially one of those AV to HDMI adapters in cable form. Um, they just do it a little bit better, I gotta say, but not a whole lot. I, I still would not recommend those versus these, especially when you look at the cost of those, $30 to $40, versus like all things equal, the Xbox 2 HDMI is under 50 bucks. That is a much better option for you than any of those cables, any of those adapters, anything along those lines. And then as far as what I am viewing my stuff on, I am using a Samsung M5 32 inch uh, HD monitor. Um, I have gone ahead, one of the things like I mentioned earlier, is I did discover that I had my brightness jacked all the way up, like it was maxed out and I didn't realize that in my testing originally. I've now set my brightness down to on a range from zero 
to 60, it is at 20. So it's a little bit darker than halfway, but it's the same for all three of them. So we are going to start out here on the Zedusa. Looking at things to begin with, like I'm seeing a little bit of like horizontal tearing, but overall, this looks really, really good. Uh, this is set to 720p output mode. Uh, that is one of them that since the Eon Gaming says not to use 1080i on any of them, we're going to do 720p comparison for everything across the board. Uh, so let's go ahead and get starting. And I am using the S controller, even though I am not a fan of this controller. So we'll go to Halo 2 and Campaign. I think this menu here looks pretty beautiful by the way um i was really impressed when that popped up to begin with how sharp that actually did look and we're not going to go through a ton of this because there's pretty much one area on this level that if we go to we'll be able to kind of see the difference oh and for capture card i'm using my hapog pvr 60 pro uh to capture everything now, looking at this tunnel here, on so I've got my capture window through OBS over here versus what I'm seeing here on my left on my monitor. My monitor looks a little bit brighter than what I'm seeing through OBS. And again, this is just coming straight off of the system. There's no, um, I'm not using an M cable or N classic or anything along those lines. You know, the good thing is this does still feel nice and responsive, which, I mean, I was not expecting anything beyond that. Now, I will also admit I am not the greatest Halo player, not the greatest first-person shooter player, so there is that as well. So I will say this feels good. It feels responsive. And we've got the flashlight on, just makes it a little bit easier to see a few things. But again, now I'm looking at you know what I'm seeing on my monitor versus what uh, what is being captured, and what's being captured does look a little bit darker than what I am seeing here. The other thing to keep in mind as well is what I am seeing will look a little bit different anyways because of things like YouTube compression, uh, the way things get rendered out, so on and so on and so on. But I've got to say, you know, pretty positive experience thus far. Um, oh, except for when I run out of ammo, so there's that too. But now we're going to switch, as I die, we're going to switch on over to the Xbox 2 HD. All right, so now we have the Xbox 2 HDMI connected. And just to show, the, here's the XBHD, here's the Zedusa. And I should have, I guess, done that with the um, Zedusa showing that that was hooked up. And then the other two were, you'll just have to take my word for it. Here's the title screen. Again, I think this looks good. I actually think the Zedusa may have looked a little bit crisper. Although this looks, that looks just as good. So, uh, all right, so let's take a look here. And again, same, same. This actually, this hallway looks a little bit brighter. You know what? We're going to do side by side on all three here just to kind of see how this looks. Uh, and I'll just do a screenshot of it so you can kind of see. It looks a little bit brighter, but not much. Oh, I guess I forgot on this that I've got to hold down both triggers to go ahead and fire both weapons. Helps, too, that I know what I'm doing a little bit more now this, uh, you know, playing this another time through. So personally, I think the Zedusa and the Xbox Two uh, HD look damn near identical. I mean, it's 
it's pretty close to me. I thought that I could uh, use this before, and for some reason I just either never got close enough to the turret to actually see that I could or or something, but yeah, mown him down. Yeah, overall, I mean, like that, if you take a look very dark on the capture, uh, I have no such issues on my monitor, so again, I don't know if it's something where um, there's something being lost in the capture or what. Oh, hey, you guys are up there. Got those guys. Alright, so I'd say we've got a good look here at the Xbox 2 HD. Now let's take a look at the XBHD. Alright, and kind of like what I just did too. Zedusa, Xbox to HD. This is the uh, XB2 HD. Or the XBHD, I'm sorry. So we're going to dive back in some Halo 2. Again, I think this this scene, this screen looks beautiful. Um, looks vibrant. I am seeing it brighter on my monitor than I am through my capture device. So all three, raw, naked eye, just from the seat of my pants, they all look almost identical on my monitor here. They do look considerably different getting captured. So I think what you're playing on will have a bit of a impact on it although this does look darker to me um, just with what I am seeing and it is super dark on the capture like this feels like I have to have the flashlight on at this point where before it was more of an optional yeah so you can see how much light gets cast by the flashlight there Yeah, I will say the flashlight definitely makes a bigger advantage using this than when I was using the other two. Uh, one thing I will say, too, is generally speaking, my Hapog capture card is generally soft on blacks. So the fact that this is pretty dark is... Um, it, it's an interesting challenge, I would say. So we've got the dual plasma weapons now. Whoa. All yeah, this one does now, having played these back to back to back, definitely looks darker than the other two. Come on. Got him. Oh, now we got another better gun. Here, too, you can just see how dark and everything the walls are. Now, I can turn the flashlight on again and definitely brightens it up, but, you know, that's shouldn't be necessary, you know? You know, same type of thing, just it's it is dark. Now, is it unplayably dark? No. Is, can you make adjustments? Yes. Um, and we're actually at a later point than what I was on the other two adapters. I'm going to throw in one other game really quick, just, just for some more testing. I'm going to throw in some Crimson Skies, and we're going to go in reverse order here. So, Zedusa and Xbox to HD uh, right there. This is the XBHD uh, from Eon Gaming that we were playing. Uh, I absolutely loved this game when I first played it with the Xbox to HD or the uh, XB HD uh, from Eon recently. I thought this was a fun game. 
This screen to me, I will say, looks a little bit blurry right now. And Granted, I don't have my glasses on, but this looks blurry and does not look as crisp as what we were just seeing uh, with Halo. So I will say that. Okay. This looks extremely dark. Holy cats. Yeah, looking at this, you can't see any any of the detail really in the mountain just because they're so dark I'm making it my business whoa we got some enemies coming this way now and when I say that as far as the darkness that was on the capture it looks okay on what I'm seeing but not fantastic Let's see if we can't get him make him blow it up sir got him Got him. What was that all about? You're a good friend, Nathan. Follow me to my station. I'll repair your plane. All right, we'll go to the station. Yeah, looking at the detail on the mountains and everything, I'm going to play the same level on all three. Um, you know, you can't make out the detail in the capture like what I'm seeing here on the... Uh, on my screen, this is definitely brighter than what I'm seeing here. Even the detail in the background and the hangar and whatnot, this is definitely better looking than what is being recorded. So, which is weird that, I mean, like like I say, out of a range of from 0 to 60, I have it set to 20. Um, the fact that this is that much brighter is just odd. So, once again, this is the uh, XBHD. This is the Zedusa. We have the HDMI 2, or Xbox HDMI, hooked up right now. All right, this also looks very dark on the recording. Um, so, there, there's something to it, but this is still brighter, I would say. I'll also say I don't think this screen looks as blurry or grainy as uh, what it did on the XB, uh, XBHD. These guys friends of yours? All right, let's see what we can find here. Looks like the uh, the details and whatnot on the mountain still fairly dark. So I don't think that is exclusive to the uh, the XBHD. I wish I remembered how to do the ammo minutes. Actually, a very useful maneuver. Get back to Doc. Make sure that we're protecting him. I see you. Oh, quit your whining, old man. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm seeing minimal brightness differences in this. Let's see if I can get with the missile. Got him. Um, you know, looking at the details in the mountain peaks and whatnot, maybe a little bit brighter greens, but not terribly so. I mean, obviously here where the sun is shining, you can see it in the shadows, though. You know, not a whole lot brighter, but a little. I'm going to come in hot, see if we can buzz the tower. Let's take a look at how the... That looks brighter. That definitely looks brighter, I will say. So let's go ahead. Let's hook up the Zedusa. All right, so XBHD, Xbox 2 HDMI here. This is the Zedusa hooked up. Honestly, this screen looks cleaner than the other two. This looks the brightest out of all three. At least coming through here. Kind of comparing again my monitor versus what's being recorded. Let's take a look how the mountains and everything look here in just a sec. This looks very similar from what I'm recording or what I'm seeing here to what's being recorded. I would say this is the brightest yet, so that's good to uh, good to know. Oh no, he didn't. 
So again, looking at the mountains and whatnot. Whoa. Got him. Um, the greenery still looks darker on the capture than what I'm playing. Um, but I would say this is definitely the brightest out of all of them. So looking at the three of these together, what do I think as far as the color, the brightness, so on and so forth? So the XBHD, darker. It just is. Um, but also, I will say the Xbox 2 HDMI and the Zedusa are dark as well. Um, we'll take a look here as we get closer to the hangar. Now, they are not to the same level darkness, I will say, as the XB2 HD or XBHD uh, from Eon. So... Uh, that is the darkest out of all three, but all of them, and that was brighter there too than the Xbox or XBHD, um, all of them have some brightness issues, I would say. Um, to me, what I'm looking at though as well is the quality of picture. I think the Zedusa looks a little bit better than what the uh, Xbox 2 HD MI looks like, but they both don't look poor enough compared to the XBHD, if all you're looking for is an HDMI output, like there's no reason to pay that extra money on that. Um, these other two are perfectly good additional options. Um, you know, again, just kind of looking and flying around here too. I'm not seeing you know, or not feeling any lag or delay or latency. Um, I don't want to race. Um, you know, I'm hit a button. A button responds on all three of them. They're they're all very good as far as that goes. Um, I'm overall satisfied with the gameplay performance. It's the brightness that is definitely something that can be criticized. Quite frankly, on all three to different levels. No pun intended. Talking about black levels, um, I would say best to worst or worst to best is going to be the XBHD, the Xbox to HDMI, and then the Zedusa probably has got the best black levels out of all three. So there you have my comparison of the Xbox to HDMI, the XBHD, and the Zedusa. What are my thoughts? Well, for me, my daily driver now is the Xbox 2 HDMI. At under $50, it gets me the exact solution that I am looking for. It gets me a straight HDMI output out of my original Xbox to go into my Switch box so that I can go ahead and go to my capture card or go to my TV here. For me, this is simple, it's effective, and it works wonderfully. Now, if I was more into the Xbox library, I would probably still be using my Zedusa. Um, I love the fact that it does both the component and composite output on here without needing the separate component video cables from either Microsoft or the monster cables like I have. And like I say, I have the monster component cables. And this going through my RetroTINK 5X looks beautiful. The thing is, I only have a four in, one out component video switcher box here. I have four other systems I would much rather upscale than my original Xbox. So for me, this does a lot of wonderful things. It does too much in some ways, but still beautiful quality. The one ding I have to say on it, and I did mention it during the, the bench testing here, is the fact that it needs something better to support it, not just being supported by the connector here. And the final one, and this is actually the one that I hooked back up. This is the Xbox to HD. And I like the guys from Eon Gaming. I'm throwing that out there. Throwing my personal friendships and biases out there. I like Justin, I like his team. Every time I've hung out with them, I have had a good time. I still don't quite understand why this exists in this price range and this form factor. Like, I'm not a tournament guy. I'm not a LAN party guy. So for me, the LAN adapter, has no value to me. I didn't even test that part in my review. I didn't test it in this video because I have no way to test it. I don't do LAN. Um, the dual output HDMI seemed overkill. Um, like, again, it kind of speaks to that LAN party nature of things of being able to have two TVs side by side. 
I, I don't see the need for that. At $190, I think this is overpriced and underwhelming. And as I've shared now here too, the picture is darker. This is probably the worst out of the three picture-wise. Now, it was shared recently online, I'll have the picture of it right here, that one of the settings that they did on here is wrong. The way that they have the HDMI signal being processed is actually reversed or inverted, or, or there's something in the way the signal is processed that is making the picture darker. The problem with this is there's no way to do a firmware update. Like, I look at the Carby, and I look at the Prism HD for the GameCube, and even the, uh, the GCHD that Eon Gaming puts out as well. You can go ahead and get either JST adapters or connect it through a, um, like a mini or a micro USB cable, USB-C, or just connect a, um, a, a, a micro SD card to it to update firmware. I don't know that you can easily crack this open to be able to update firmware. So these may be SOL out of the gate. It would be nice I don't want to say if they did a recall, but quite honestly, if anyone complained about it, to offer service where you could send it in and they could go ahead and flash new firmware on it that corrected that issue. Um, I would say for the average consumer, you don't want this. You just don't. It's overkill for what you're going to need. If all you're looking to do is simply play your original Xbox and get an HDMI output on it, I cannot recommend the Xbox to HDMI any higher. Again, it meets a great price point at under 50 bucks. It just works. It provides good video quality. And then you can always pair it with something like a, an M Classic or one of the PhotoFast adapters if you do want to get some minor line doubling. And once the RetroTank 4K comes out, you can go from this into that, and then also go ahead and upscale. Now, that's a lot of equipment there to have to worry about. If you already have like a RetroTank 5X, and you have you know just basic component video cables laying around, the Zedusa is a great option if you are a heavy user and game player of the original Xbox. Like I mentioned, I'm just not. I have other systems, I would rather use my Upscaler 4 that just don't have enough inputs to support this. Um, and you're looking at not a huge difference in price between this and the Xbox 2 HDMI, but the one thing I will say is, well, both have issues isn't the right way to put it. Both are in high demand, both are basically produced by very small teams, so there can be a bit of a wait. I think I waited about five or six months to get my Zedusa and my Electron Shepard Xbox 2 HDMI. I think I waited maybe a month and a half or two months. Um, but I mean, it, that's something to kind of keep in mind too. The other thing to keep in mind too was I purchased this I purchased this. I was provided an Xbox uh, XB to HD adapter from Eon Gaming, and I would honestly recommend these two over that. Just being honest about it. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. We do go ahead and check most of them out for you here too. Now, if you do want to check out our original unboxings and testings of all three of these, I will have our Xbox playlist for you right here on screen. Check those out. We've also got videos covering a lot of different controllers and other accessories for the original Xbox.